Hi everyone, it's Nick here, or at least the version of me that I just built in Teams. This is my Teams avatar, and you can have one too, as the avatars feature has now been released in preview for everyone to try. So let's take a look at how you get access to this feature, how you set it up, how you're gonna go about using it, and what considerations you might want to work through before adopting it inside your organization. But before we get onto the technical details, let's take a minute to think about how we got to this new feature. Three years ago, when we all started suddenly working from home, video meetings immediately became a necessity. But compared to where most of us are with this technology now, we were in bad shape. Many had never used Teams or Zoom or any other video conferencing solution. Few of us had good webcams or decent microphones, and only the Insta-famous had ever heard of ring lights. We were suddenly privy to previously off-limit spaces, like seeing our boss's living room in the background, or our colleague's kitchen, or even being in a meeting where at least one participant was laying out in the sun. Interesting cultures emerged in some organisations around the expectation, or otherwise, to be on camera, and we all got rather tired of seeing ourselves in this new way. And then, over time, things became more normal. Better technology arrived, with many of us upgrading video and audio to make the experience better for those that we connected with. And companies like Microsoft also began to improve the available options too, with features like custom meeting backgrounds and together mode in Teams. But still, there was no middle ground between either being on camera or not being on camera. And this is where Microsoft is pushing forth this third path with avatars. Microsoft doesn't just develop features out of nowhere, although sometimes it can feel this way. They do heaps of research on how people use their tools and how generally tools like theirs can improve work. And they found that still three years into this big experiment, only about 30% of participants in meetings turn their cameras on. But there's also a big correlation between video participation in meetings and positive outcomes like the amount of engagement and the amount of inclusion. So avatars are a method to create a middle ground where, whether due to meeting fatigue or discomfort, or just the fact that you're joining from a less than ideal location, a representation of you can still be on video even if you are not. If this video is useful to you and you're interested in seeing more content like this, then please do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that next time I release one, you're the first to know. So with that out of the way, let's jump into Teams and see how you get your avatar. Well, the first thing is to make sure you're in the classic client so you can't have this try new Teams turned on. Um, and you need to make sure that you're in the preview version. So if you see this little icon above your face here, then you are in the preview version. But if you're not, you're gonna click on the three dots, you're gonna to go to about, and you're gonna turn on the public preview. If you don't see the public preview, there is an option, and you're not a Teams administrator, then you're gonna to need to talk to your administrator to get that option turned on for your organization. But if you are a Teams administrator, this is really easy to turn on from your Teams Admin Center. You're just going to jump into the Teams Admin Center, open up the Teams tab, go to Teams Update Policies, and then you can either update your global policy or create a new policy if you want. And you're gonna to want to make sure that you have your public preview either as forced if you want to make sure people have the public preview or you're going to make it enabled. Um, you also have the option of following whether you have the preview turned on in Office or not. So, so long as someone has it enabled or has it forced, they will be able to see that public preview. So once you're set up with the preview client and you're in the classic Teams, you're going to come over to the three dots here and you're going to either click on your avatars app or search for it if you don't see it. And once you click on that, you're gonna be brought into the avatars builder. So you can see I've already built the handsome fellow that you saw at the start of this video here. And you can have up to three avatars available to you in this avatars app. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. And you get the option to either duplicate one you've got or create one new from scratch. So let's create one new from scratch. So you can see this is very similar to when you build a new character in a video game. You start off with some kind of general people templates here that you can use. And you can go from there and either use that template as it is or you can customize it further. So let me grab 
this guy here and we're going to use this avatar and you can see that we can then go ahead and customize it. So I'm going to go ahead and customize and you can see there's all sorts of different things that we can change here. So there's a whole set of like different options that are here for things like body shape, skin tone, prosthetic, uh, face shape, eyes, hearing aids, mouth, um, different hair options. But also in many of these, if we go back to body shape, you can see that you have um, this custom option there where you can go in and you can fine tune if you don't see something that works for you. So you could just go ahead and use one of these options, but if you want to really play around with it, you can go in and go to those custom options as well. Um, and you've got everything here, including makeup, um, including wardrobe options. Um, you can get yourself a, a nice hat if you want one. Um, and you can go in and you can change the color of lots of different options as well. You see, we'll go ahead and change the color of our hat there. It is very customizable. So once you've got it the way you want it, you can just click save, and then you've got your, your person there that you can use. And if you want to duplicate one, then you can do that as well. So I could duplicate one of the ones that I already have. You see, I've got a duplicate here. So if I just wanted to go in and customize him, perhaps I want to change his, um, his outfit a little bit. So I can just go ahead and change that outfit so perhaps I have a version of my avatar that is a formal attire and I have a more relaxed, casual avatar for other occasions. Um, but you can have up to three of these. So once you've got your avatars the way you want them, the next thing you're going to do is join a meeting. So let's go into the calendar and I'm going to join this meeting here. And so long as you've got your camera turned off, you can start with an avatar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this new button here, effects and avatars. Um, if you don't see this immediately, just wait a while. It took a little while between turning um, the options on for avatars, between creating an avatar and actually seeing this option. So it might take a little while to appear in your teams. You can see you have these avatar options. So I'm going to choose this avatar here. I can choose a particular background and on what I want to do. I'm just going to go with this white background initially and then I can join my meeting. And so long as your mic is turned on, your avatar's mouth will move while you speak. If you turn it off, your avatar's lips will stop moving. But in this case, I want him to talk along with me. So once you're in here and you've got your avatar up and running, you can come up to this more menu here and go to effects and avatars. You can see from here, you can change out your avatar if you want to. And whatever you change, you need to go down and apply avatar unless you're doing a reaction. Um, so now you've got your guy in here, you can click on some reactions, you can do these different things. And there's a whole bunch of these. You can click on more and you see you've got a whole bunch of reactions here. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with your avatar. I mean, it's not limitless, but there's a, a lot of options there. And if we come back out of this, you can see we can change our background as we might want to. So I'm going to click on a new background and apply that. And you see I've got that background there. You can change your avatar's mood. Maybe you start off happy at the start of your meeting. And by halfway through, you're kind of neutral. And if it's running over, you can be less happy. Um, I'm not sure what the idea of, of using that is, but um, I'm sure some people will, will play around with that. You can change where your avatar is going to be looking and you can zoom in and zoom out on your avatar as well. And there's an experimental setting for custom backgrounds. You can see if I turn this off, the two plain backgrounds I uploaded disappear. Um, if I turn that back on again, then I have the option to add new. I can add in backgrounds if I want them. And the other thing to highlight is it is very easy to switch between your camera and switch between your avatar. So if I just come up here and turn my camera on, you can see I appear, and then if I turn my camera off, I can go back into my effects and avatars. I can turn my avatar back on and just say apply avatars. And my avatar reappears again. So within one meeting, you can change this around. Um, perhaps you start a meeting in a location that you're not able to use your um, your camera, 
um, and you can use the avatar and then once you're able to use the camera you can you can switch that around. So I think this is an interesting feature that a lot of people will want to play around with but beyond that kind of initial playing around I do think this is something that there's going to be a line of people who love it and embrace it and want to use it and other people that really are a bit turned off by this being in their meetings and don't want anything to do with it. And if you're stuck in the middle of that as someone who is concerned with Microsoft 365 adoption or perhaps you're an HR professional and you're considering the impact of being on camera in terms of team building or team member connection, then what should be your takeaway from this new avatars feature? Well, I think the first thing is to say that while it's probably easy for a lot of people to laugh at a feature like this, it's also important to recognize that Microsoft does certainly do its homework and its research before intervening in future of work issues like this. So even if this avatars feature is not the, the long-term solution to fixing those issues like camera fatigue that have been pointed out in the release, it's probably something that we should be thinking about within our organizations and is an issue that needs to be addressed in the long term. And if you have uh, any questions or kind of concerns about Microsoft's commitment to these future of work, modern workplace issues, then you really should check out their Work Lab website and there'll be a link to this below, as I think that kind of clarifies the, the, the range of things that they spend their time looking into before you start seeing features like this rolling out in products like Teams. Second, I think it's important to recognize that there is going to be a big organizational culture dimension to whether you see avatars or you don't see avatars in a particular organization's meetings. And those organizations that are effective in getting everyone to be on camera are probably the ones having those productive meetings um, but I think we should really think about, is that a, a cause and an effect, or is it simply a correlation for those organisations? Because they're probably also the organisations that are focused on having effective meetings, and are thinking about things like not overloading people's calendars with so many meetings that they get fatigued from being on camera. Now, I was recently chatting with someone whose company had changed around a lot of the meetings they were doing. And they previously had a day long out of office offsite meeting to talk about business development planning and other things. And in order to save budget and probably some efficiencies, they decided to move this meeting, the output they were trying to get from this meeting from a day long out of the office experience onto Teams. But the way they'd done it was just scheduling everyone who would previously be off-site in that day-long meeting to an eight-hour long Teams meeting. Now, if you're doing this in your company, please stop, because that is not the way to engage with this new technology in a way that's gonna be productive for what you're trying to achieve or productive for the people that you have in that meeting. You need to be more creative, and this creates the opportunity for flexibility that wasn't there before. It creates the opportunity to include people who wouldn't have been included before and to engage people in different ways uh, that is cognizant of different people communicate differently, different people think differently. And by combining all of those ideas with the technology that's available to us in products like Teams, we can have better meetings. But just taking everyone from a day long offsite to a day long Teams meeting, that just isn't gonna be good for anyone. Lastly, if avatars are a solution that helps us to boost meeting engagement, then that's great. But I think it's important that in organizations they don't become the easy path for people who were previously on the fence about appearing on camera, because I think that would be a step back. I think in many organizations, having expectations or guidance around when and why you should appear in meetings, I mean appearing physically on, on video in meetings, is important and that guidance can probably include avatars if you want to use them in your organization. And this is probably similar to having guidance around what is appropriate attire. 
Um, should people be eating meals while they're conducting their meetings? Should people be putting down their cell phones? Now, you need to be cognizant of everyone's different concerns, um, everyone's different experience coming into those meetings and not put those things in place in a way that uh, makes inclusion more difficult or is discriminatory against some of the participants in a meeting. Uh, but, but the same standard, it can be important to allow everyone to get the best out of themselves to have some kind of guidance in place, whether that's formal or informal guidance, and whether it's on an org-wide, departmental, or even a meeting-by-meeting -meeting basis to make sure that you're getting the best out of that opportunity to engage with your employees or other stakeholders. So hopefully this little overview of avatars and the things that you might be thinking about when adopting avatars has been useful to you. I'd be really interested to learn what you think of this new technology in the comments. Um, will you be using it? Will you be trying to roll it out in your organization? Do you have any concerns about it? It's always interesting to learn the stories of others um, when it comes to new pieces of technology like this that are rolled out into Teams. So I hope this has been a value add for you and I hope to see you back here for the next video. Until then, bye bye.